And they never left in the blue. He played a pretty dominant series to get here. It's Pyong. Bottom left in the red. Looking to go and maybe get some revenge for what happened to get to happen to him and here in the GSL. It's Gumiho. And before we get this series started in earnest, I'd like to remind you all that if you want more StarCraft content uh, and Stormgate content when that happens, you should go A, sub to the YouTube channel because that's how you're going to catch by VODs five, six, seven days a week. But also, you should go follow me on Twitch because that's where this happens live. Also happens live on YouTube, so you, you got both. Much like Pion's got both, right, both barracks right here on the map. Getting aggressive being a little bit annoying maybe a little bit crazy i don't know but for now Prox two racks Prox two racks reaper out of beyond and this is pretty close this is a very aggressive prox i mean proxy is by definition oh no oh this is potentially very painful it's a reactor first out of gumiho he is playing as greedy as possible now he is blocking this reaper cliff but like that doesn't matter the Reapers are going to be set up right here. And beyond pooling this, actually, does that hurt? Because he's going to pull his first Reaper. And theoretically, he wants to... No, yeah, this does. He wants to be attacking right now. There's no production for Gumiho at the moment. Right? If he can start to move in right at the moment, that'd be really good. Otherwise, the reactor's really good for Gumiho. And it's kind of this interesting setup where he's like, well, you know... A reactor is rough because you're not you don't have that early production on the flip side now it means you have two reaper production versus two reaper production your factory's done gumiho is going to be in pain for a little bit of time he's going to have more reapers showing up it's not going to feel good he's going to lose some stvs there was a decent amount of stvs here Ooh, five workers are going to go down six so pulling down. and now it's three reapers versus two beyond tries to dive on top reaper trades for reapers certainly but he knocks both of them down and yeah, there are more Reapers on the way. There are more Hellions on the way. And that should force Beyond out of here. Reaper somehow stays alive until the very last second. Nice KDA charge. Now he's gonna, oh, he's going to kill the Hellion. Is he going to get it? No, I guess there's uh, there's enough of a body block. But even still, I Gumiho is taking so much damage from this. It's eight dead SCVs. More Reapers, of course, on the way. So Gun, he's going to have four of them now. Hellion. Oh, this Hellion's not a good spot. This Hellion needs to back up. And Bianna, okay, I guess, yeah, Bian is, is kind of done here with the second Hellion with the Reapers. Damage has been done. You know, it's 23 to 18. He's going to dive on. Oh, look at that in the wall. Bian on the rally. He's just, he's Gumio's dead here. The Hellions are going to fall down. You got to be careful. He's going to lose the second Reaper. Probably doesn't kill this third Hellion. Look at the, look at the micro from Bian. It's so good. He's not going to kill the third Hellion. Do I get, oh, maybe. No, no, too many Reapers here is on the reinforcement line. Uh, no. Okay, that, that's a waste. I'll be on behind this. He's he's not lifting up and going home. He's building more Reapers. He wants this Hellion, damn it. He's not going to get it. Okay. It, this is a bit of a waste now, Beyond. You got a lot of damage done. You did a great job. But you, you, it's time to go home. Pick up your toys, put them in your bag. We can come back another day. Bian's in a really solid position in this game. Yeah, you know, losing those extra Reapers is not as happy. It did slow down some of his gas mining, or it slowed down uh, some of his gas economy a little bit, but to build those extra Reapers, that didn't really get a lot done. But uh, actually, you know, he's got it. This is four Reapers, two Hellions. There is nothing on Beyond's side of the map. He's got an SCV pulled as well. Gumiho does, I guess, just for the repair on the Psych on the Hellions. And he is busting through this. There's nothing here. It's Cyclone's being made one at a time. There's no reactor. There's no barracks. And Gumiho's going to do just as much damage as he took on the other side, if not more so. Really nice hold from Gumiho at the end of the day. Like, God damn, he took damage, but Beyond did overcommit. And I think that's, yeah, that's our story, right? Bion lost two more, re or two more Reapers I was talking about. Huh? Eh, maybe it doesn't matter. He's got Hellions, that, or he's got Cyclones. That feels pretty solid defensively. But imagine if he'd made this defense with three more Reapers. I think he's fine. I, I don't think this is nearly as problematic. He doesn't lose 12 
SCV. He doesn't lose all of his Cyclones. Eh, maybe the Cyclones do. The Cyclone looks like it's going to stay alive. KD8 charge. Is the Reaper going to get it? No, no, it's not. So Cyclone stays alive there, but you know, it's 12 drones. It's or 12 SCVs. It's two Cyclones that died. It's a Liberator that somehow, I guess, died on the other side of the map for Beyond at the same time. Yeah, uh, four Cyclones on the map from Gumio. So it's kind of a disaster for Beyond. At the end of the day, it was it looked decent, right? You get a SCVs, you trade army for army, like you're fine. But unfortunately, those a couple extra Reapers that Beyond sacrificed just not working out all that well as now. Cyclones, oh, four Cyclones to do. I mean, Beyond is going to pick one up. He's going to pick the second one up. A nice micro, but now it's dead. And now the Cyclones, while well, they're looking for lock-ons on enemy Cyclones, not on these Marines. So they're going to get the lock-on. That's a dead Cyclone. And that's a dead Marine. That's a dead Beyond. Game one. That was the way of Gumiho. So we talked about proxies and we talked game one about funky proxies and Beyond went and got damage done with it, but not enough. Uh, or, you know, probably enough if he had gone and sent his Reapers back home if he hadn't committed so hard. And now it's Gumiho's the one that's proxying, but this is double gas proxy. This is looking like Marauders. But apparently not. He's just going to go barracks double gas. It, it's so funny. You're looking at this and like, ah, oh, man, I'm looking at the positioning here and the barracks are a little bit separate. That feels like he's trying to pull the wool over his eye. This feels weird. This feels like this might be some Marauder thing, right? Just especially with double gas. And then he's like, nope, nope, nope. We're just going to build Reapers. And it's, this is weird too, because this is double racks Reaper versus double racks Reaper, main base Reaper versus, uh, someone can tell me in two minutes what Bjorn just said. I'd appreciate it. Someone speaks Reaper, Korean in Reaper, chat, but, uh, Bjorn sees the Reaper. He sees what's happening. He's like, oh, you proxied, huh? He's the barracks. Doesn't see the second. So I guess there is that, but it, it's two racks Reaper versus two racks Reaper. Bjorn, he's pulling SCVs on the high ground because again, he's a little bit slower on this but i uh, yeah no this is not gonna work for gumio now the other way to say that is this is also not gonna work for beyond but his factory is faster he's apple worker i think that's all you really have to care about um he's got his eco lead he's got his every he, he's got his attack lead and the one thing that is interesting here is, you know, like he continues to build more Reapers, but he's not going and I, I guess he can't, right? Reapers on the high ground. There's, there are two Reaper cliffs. One of them is, is scouted by the barrack. So Bion can respawn in time. He's got his Reapers on the other one. It's really hard to go up in the main base. So Gumio can't try to make that happen. Certainly Reaper count is five to five. That doesn't really make much of a difference either. Now Bion's committing to seven. And Gumiho's not, right? He's getting a sixth Reaper, which is one shot potential on, on some units. But he's just going back home. The barracks are going to get lifted. Both barracks are going to get lifted. Yan's going up to a ton of Reapers. He's going up to seven Reapers. And the Hellions as well. He wants to go for a bust. He wants to go and try to take advantage of this timing where his opponent is going to have his production in the sky. Is maybe not going to have as much at home. There's going to be a tank out. And this tank's going to be on the high ground. It's not like Gumio wants to hold onto the low ground at the, the moment. His orbit, his command center's not done. It's not an orbital. It's not a necessity. So this tank's going to be here on the high ground. And Bion's going to attack into this and just not be happy. <laughs> you can't. He is overcommitted to this early game stuff. Once again, he built too many Hellion. Or I, I, I think he just like overbuilt his Reapers a little bit. And Gumio just has the reads like, yeah, you're going to counterattack me. I need not Cyclones. New Cyclones are pretty horrible in low numbers to defend against these large number of units. No, I'm, I'm going to build a tank. And you're not going to be able to do anything to me. Now the game goes on. Beyond technically up in supply. His natural is a little bit faster, but not all that much. And again, that it's very technically up in supply. It's 18. It was 18 to 14 and quality when Gumi was away anyways. So now it just really feels like this game is gonna I, yeah it's a ton of reapers right <laughs> on the on the map for both sides but 
despite that, and despite that, kind of, it's one of those scenarios where it's like, man, I, I got a tool I want to use it, you know? I got a... I got a sword I want to cut me with. I don't know. Um, I got a hammer. I want to nail things, right? It doesn't really make sense for either player to get super aggressive right now. The tanks for Gumio are just really in a good spot. Yeah, uh, you know, he's just very defensive here. He's not going to get broken. And beyond... Yeah, no. So, despite having all of these Reapers, and Beyond actually got a Banshee as well, we're kind of in this weird mid, in this weird setup where, yeah, players are building a lot of army units. They, they got stuff. But you don't want to attack into this. Atta attacking means losing it pretty much at this point. So, Beyond, he's got his third base on the way. He mines through the gold mineral patch. I like that. And this is actually kind of an interesting setup. I really am i'm excited to see where we're gonna where, where this goes from a kind of a tbt perspective on this map as the banshee dives in you gotta get a mule they get a couple scvs very nice always oh, gonna get four scvs and a mule is beautiful I, it's actually so nice i'd love to see him kill the tank too i think I, but uh, oh second banshee on the right side there's wait 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 a minute there's no scan energy now it's gonna get on the right side there's just not enough anti-air look at this gumiho is he made the cardinal sin sitting at like the five ish minute mark a second scan finally this banshee goes down but this one on the left is just not dealt with there is gumi who's dead he's gonna take far too much damage from these reapers there's just not enough scan energy this ban this banshee ties i guess is, is is stopped when it runs out of energy not when the scans are there it's 90 how in though i have not seen a banshee get this much damage done in it's 22 dead scvs it is 22 dead SCVs from two Banshees. And like two different scans. I wouldn't be surprised if Gumio just taps out at this point. Like that's how bad this is right now. Gumio's got his third base. <laughs> Byun's got his third base on location. Just to be clear. Now I was talking about how like, oh man, I, I can't wait to see how TBT is going to work with this. With these rocks and like maybe there's some funky sieges and things. Like this seems pretty cool. But I guess you do actually have to knock rocks down to even put any sort of pressure on this. So Gumio's very all in. Just look, let's be clear. He's down 20 workers. He's down a base. Like, he is extremely all in in this game. So all that Beyond has to do is defend. He's got his tanks. What's the tank count at? What are we looking at? Three to four. Definitely manageable. Does he have Stim? He does not. That's the big deal. Stim done for Gumio. Not for Beyond. And the Vikings are going to move forward. So it's air control for Gumio as well as... We're gonna see these reapers i mean Bion, he's actually gonna just cut off reinforcements it's like you don't have to go he's one shot in these marines you don't have to get more economic damage beyond has already gotten that but yeah might as well but shutting down the reinforcements is gonna be pretty nice gumiho if he wasn't all, all in already the friendly fire is really disgusting eight more scvs go down but this army from gumiho is still pretty scary and this slow siege forward is a problem tank lines are you know, guarding the Liberators, and eventually... By the way, Beyond doesn't have as many Vikings either. <laughs> That's another problem, but Gumio's not building anymore. So eventually, Marines... Oh, okay, yeah, there we go. Viking lead, changed. Marines get damage done to the Vikings. There's a repair here available for these Vikings. More Marines are going to show up. Beyond, Stim's done now. Tries to take the fight. Knocks down the Liberator, locks down the Vikings. That's all he had to do at the moment. Because remember, 12 STVs are dead. It's 61 workers to 26. Beyond, he's going to pull the STVs. Not yet. We need to buy a little bit more time. Even as he loses tanks. Again, he's on. Gumio's trying to put him on a timer right now. Now, okay, it seems like he wants to go. Orbital's going to get lifted. He's looking for the resiege. He wants Gumio to move in just a little bit more. And that's when he's going to try to spring the trap. Uh, obviously, he's really just lifted the orbital more than anything because he wants to go and... Oh, he wants to make sure the orbital doesn't die to the, die to the tanks. Gumio's going to trigger the fight right now. This is not... I can't imagine this works for Gumio, but the splits actually aren't all that great for Bion at the moment. Tanks continue to fall. Remember, though, Bion has this base. It's fully mining. He needs to... Three STVs are being rallied, but uh, they're not mining. Even still, Bion is still mining on two bases. He's still up 30 workers. Like, he is... Gumio may think that he's in a decent spot as these... Uh, the tanks are not going to catch this... The Catch the main arting STVs. Gumio may think that he's got Beyond in a really, in a bit of a chokehold and a really awkward spot. It's like, man, I'm making a comeback happen. You're not, Gumio. Not yet. 
the economy it's three bases to two <laughs> this tank line is scary sure but beyond has air con air control now three vikings to zero he's building liberators so this tank line is just not going to be able to do all that as much as it would like anymore and now with the liberator siege i i, I think this is checkmate for gumio at this point slowly but slowly the tank lines are going to get broken down and by the way there's this high ground right the liberators can siege from positions that gumio can just not deal with so Pyun, he knows that just by showing the liberator he's made the break happen he knows that by just by showing this liberator here gumio has to back up and try to make something happen building more vikings once again third base now floating over if you look at the income graph i mean yeah gumio was mining a little bit more in this period of time in the like the last a tiny little bit of the last minute but Abyan was so far ahead economically for so long it's a 50 supply lead and by the way Abyan's aware of this drop on the right side he is well oh well, he's not well positioned to defend tank's gonna have to re-siege on this but not in time so Abyan uh, a little bit awkward here very much out of position is this I mean that's a free tank that's a free tank does Abyan lose this third orbital my gut says no way and I guess it's going to be true. It's going to burn, though. And Bion just got very much out of position here. All of a sudden, Gumio, it's, I, I mean, it's still a horrible position for Gumio. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> Let no one say that this is a good position for Gumio. He's down. He's two. He's not going to have two, two. Bion's got his two. Bion's got his two, two just about done. Gumio, no shot. Down 30 army supply. He's got a tank lead. But that's about it. Like, this is just not incredible and Bion says yeah that's fine you got your army on the right side okay I'm just gonna float over left not a big deal uh he does have to worry three supply depots would supply block him so you got to be careful about that one as he looks to rally for but now this drop on the other side his 2 twos done in about five seconds that's really the time he's looking for in the meantime liberators are gonna siege 2-2 two, two done drop getting damaged on the left side tanks here so this is not gonna do much more than that drop from Gumiho tries to show its way into the natural but Bion is gonna end the game that's the story right now yeah gumio has got a drop in the natural marines are dealing with that it's fine be on lose some scvs who cares he's dislodged the third base he actually killed the third base of gumio that he spent so long trying to afford and yeah gumio he taps out that's it we move to game three and man i'm like oh, i guess it's not really doable there are reaper cliffs it's it, you can't yeah too many reaper openings you know, one, two, there's another one here. Uh, I think, I don't actually, I guess not. So yeah, you got two Reaper Cliffs. Um, I was like, are we gonna see, is there a world where we see a Command Center first in TVT? I mean, post youth is a, post youth is a long map. Like 35, 36 seconds maybe? I'm not sure. I haven't looked at the numbers yet. I need to, but uh, like it's a long rush this map. We got an in-base main. And it's a weird in-base main too, right? It's devil gold now i okay so i was gonna say we may maybe we see a command center first unlikely because it's tvt and proxy reapers are a thing but i think another matchup so we certainly will uh from a terran player now, my other question though like is it worth it as we're seeing a reaper expand out of gumio beyond going barracks double gas uh is it worth it to lift your command center over to take this base instead if this was a gold base absolutely yes i think is the answer uh i think back to habitation station right and all those terran all ins were you know you, you it was still a gold base you had to deal with that certainly um and you actually had to you were not mining a lot more on these kind of lift the base over two racks builds but the money that you were uh proxy racks i think it was actually proxy three racks but the money you would get from it was worth it with that was of course in heart of the swarm you started with six workers not not 12 uh, or not tenant how many workers do we start with crap why am i being dumb 12 workers there we go uh 12 workers so you don't start with that but arguably so maybe there's there's some math there uh, arguably though this is even better for a terrier player so for the for the setup where you would go as reapers show up in the main base here and get some damage done Get off a couple Marines to kill an SCV as well. Now they're starting to heal up here. Very nice. Well, very nicely done. Bion now has to be careful against being trapped. Marine is going to go. The Reapers are still here. 
Oh, we're seeing why maybe go on a pure Reaper expand with her. As many Reaper cliffs as they are is maybe not the best deal. Actually, excuse me, this was a Marine expand anyways. Three SCVs go down, a bunch of Marines go down. Nicely done, nicely done, beyond. But the argument I'm trying to make about this base is not only is this a gold, is a, you got three gold patches, which effectively, you know, mine at like, they're at like six gold, six blue patches worth or five blue patches worth. But also, unlike Habitation Station, where dropping mules was pointless because you don't mine extra money. Uh, effectively, a way to think about it is that a mule turns a blue a blue patch into a gold patch. It's kind of how that works, right? You mine that much more. You mine effectively gold uh, money per trip. You mine, what is it, eight minerals per trip instead of five? Seven. Seven minerals per trip instead of, uh, instead of five. So the, the point here is is that there are there are th there are mineral patches to mule, which was the big deal with that kind of habitation station. It's like, yeah, you move your SCVs over and you, you run them over and your economy builds up pretty nicely, but you are able to go and uh, you weren't you couldn't muling was pointless. Muling is not pointless now. And now, beyond, look at this attack straight up the gullet. It's a tank here. It's uh, he's gonna get the supply devos certainly. I think he might get the re he should get the reactor as well. Oh, nice job there. Really good baiting, actually, coming out of Gumiho. He moves the Viking on forward. He gets a massive shot on the Marines. And with the medevac taking a lot of damage, it looks like we're going to have to back up for the time being. So that's... That's beyond backing up for the moment. Does he have a second starport, right? So this is this is a committed timing out of beyond. He's got 1-1-1, one, 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 no additional second or third barracks, no tech. Right, no, no tech, no single tech lab, no double tech, or uh, no single eBay, no double eBay. Uh, for the moment, oh, he's going mech here. Beyond going for a pretty, I'm assuming, I was gonna say a, a pretty heavy cyclone, but no, that's a tech lab. Beyond just going mech in this game number three on Poos Youth. He's got his siege up, he's gonna deny the third base forever. I, he can't get down this ramp, not easily. Now, the problem is, his Vikings take the first shot, so he's not going to own the air here. Oh, wait, he wins. He wins the micro battle on that. Okay, Bjana lose the Viking in the end, but still. He ate the first shot, but he still won the might. Well done. Tremendously well done. So now we're going to see the starport is not able to produce two at a time. It's only producing one at a time. Bjana, what do we got here on the other side? This factory, no add-ons. It doesn't look like it's building anything just yet. There we go. Okay, so... Second factory done. I really thought we would see a double starport build out of it. The way this is going, I really expect to see a second starport instead of a second factory. Just because, again, double starport is so powerful for pushes like this. You guarantee, you're guaranteed air, air lead. Your guaranteed air superiority is really the, the big bit of value there. But for now, what are we at? Beyond at three Vikings. Gumiho at three Vikings. They're both building two at a time. This favors Gumiho. This we're close to his production, not the other way around. So, as the tank will fall, unfortunately, there beyond he's up not really working out. And I think at this point, he's gonna have to give up his dreams of breaking Gumiho. Certainly, the third base is gonna be pretty heavily delayed. I think that's fair to talk about. But I, I don't think that Gun can stay in this kind of this this free choke position anymore although vikings let's look at our flower count it's seven to six he's gonna knock a tank down pretty quickly here but gumio wins the air battle huh, 10 out of 10 times there's nothing on the ground gumio just annihilates this so uh, the tanks die that's really nice cyclone's gonna get a lock on scan gets dropped here but beyond yeah he just has to back up and and now we're at this wait a minute Beyond's mech into bio. Someone call Apollo. <laughs> Someone let him know. Although I, uh, I guess he was bio in the mech, right? Was that was was the great Apollo call? Beyond's going one two one into bio. This is wild. And the scan's gonna see everything. By the way, it's a great. It's such a good scan, actually. That it's it would be very easy to read into this that this is a uh, some sort of crazy all in but now vikings on the other side they might just kill this third base like vikings do so much damage to armored units as vikings are gonna land they're gonna drop they're gonna land they're gonna drop they're gonna play around tanks don't defend this vikings just land on the tanks you need bio here to defend 
this is a beautiful little bit of a timing coming out of Gumio. And, and again, they go up, they go down. Can't explain that. Nine Vikings to five. Beyond is still building more. And again, he's still denying this third base. He's got a... Oh, I like this. He's got a missile turret as well. So any sort of dive on top is not going to be as effective. Banshees are not going to be as effective. And let's see what happens with this. Gumio does want to take his third base. The Viking count here is... Looks like it's only three. First missile turret's done. Second one. Not there yet. Tanks move down to the low ground. Missile turret. Only one here. And, uh, it's a little bit awkward, right? Because it's fighting, it's, it's firing it at the orbital, which is not really what you want. Now this Viking, uh, this Banshee should die. Yeah, okay, the Banshee goes down, which means the missile turrets and Cyclones are a little bit more powerful. This Rally of Gun is... He's going to keep his position. Third base is still not down. It's nine minutes in for Gumiho at this point. The main base... Surely it's going to be... Yeah, yeah. It's pretty heavily mined out. Only half the minerals still remaining. Gumiho is insanely oversaturated. He's got 60 workers on two bases, but he just cannot get down this ramp. Now, with missile turrets not being there anymore, it's not going to be... Wait a minute. I'm sorry. I didn't notice this. There's a... There's a fusion core. We got battle... We have battle cruisers on the way. Is Beyond's on five ranks. He's only building three Marines at the moment. One one's done. Two two should get started. But Armory, is it even fair to call it the Armory late? This is wild. Look at this game. But I think Beyond may just kind of be dead. This battle cruiser has no answers. Bio does not kill battle cruisers all that easily. These tanks seem destined to go down. Marines are going to try. Oh, I mean, Vikings from behind. Wait a minute. The battle cruiser is dead. It's dead. It's dead. Oh, ho, ho. Very nicely done there. The fact that Byun is at three Vikings to 12. And by the way, Vikings, of course, really good against battle cruisers. They do bonus damage to massive units. It's a thing. The fact that Byun was able to do that. Play, what is he on? Five Vikings to not nearly as much. Five Vi or five Vikings to a whole lot more. And he still kind of dodges the shots for the most part. He gets the battle cruiser dead. And now Byun's not dead. He's got his fourth base on the way. Right, he's got two more starports. 2-2 two, two on the way. Combat shields getting started. 10 minutes into this game. Scans get dropped. Uh, not going to see the next battle cruiser on the way. By the way, this is... Okay, this is double starport. There, there is that. This is the weirdest game of TBT that I have seen in quite a while. <laughs> what is happening in this game? So Yamato is halfway done. One tech lab, one reactor on, on the starport. So you're building two Vikings at a time, one battle cruiser at a time. And I really do appreciate what Beyond's done here, where he is just like, okay, you know, I, I acknowledge what's happening. This game is going pretty late. I'm going to build two more starports. At least I think he did. I, they were on production tab. Yeah, okay. So there are the reactors. He's going to be able to build six Vikings at a time. And by the way, he's got plus one air on the way. His opponent armor is just now getting made because Gumiho's economy was really bad for quite a long time. I mean, look at this. Beyond the last five minutes has been really heavy, pretty heavily up there. And still is pretty heavily up there. He's got his fifth base on the way. Uh, no, I guess that's the fourth. Technically, never mind. That's the fourth. For whatever reason, this this base... No, that is, a, that is the fifth base. What am I saying? Uh, you know, it's, it's hard to do the math here, right? Because this base mines out so quickly, but... That's fifth base. So for now, a lot of Vikings versus a lot of Vikings. 16 to 7. A lot of Vikings versus a lot less Vikings. But Bjorn can build more, right? That's the big deal here. He's sitting on three starports. I think they all have reactors. He can. He's going up to five starports. He's going to build 10 Vikings at a time. Good luck maintaining air superiority, Gumiho. It's just not going to happen. Plus one air is done as well. Plus one armors on the way. Like, Yun is just playing better Sky Terran at the moment. Yeah, battle cruisers are absolutely a thing. They're beefy boys. They can tank up. They will soak a ton of Viking shots. They have Yamato. They can one-shot Vikings. All of these things are very true. Incredibly true. Very important. But at a certain point, Viking count just is all that matters. And even if... Oh, that's 
Maybe that's a lot of battle cruisers just have to run away. Yeah, and now there's nothing to buffer for this. Medevac will fall. But Bjorn, 18 Vikings to 18. And it's really, especially when the Vikings are in a flower like this, gauging this is really hard. Figuring out what your Viking, the relative Viking count is, it's, it's not as bad as, as trying to gauge Muta fights. Certainly not. Uh, or Phoenix Balls or something. Because the Vikings tend to declump a little bit more, but even still. It's pretty hard to judge whether you should attack or not. So Bjorn, I think we might just see him max out. I think that's... Um, we got, we're going up to seven star ports. How many, where are our tech labs? Okay. So two star ports have tech labs. Three star ports right now have reactors. This is this base on the north side is going to get shut down by the, by the, uh, by the, well, I want to say broodlords by the battle cruisers as they're, they don't have recall. They, oh, good God, Gumiho, this is a tremendous mistake i understand sending the one that has recall right you can get back or that, that has teleport you can get out that's pretty that's pretty valid but uh now bio is gonna get on top of this battle cruiser that only had yeah no it's dead too gun is just he went for this double factory push that worked out fairly well didn't get a ton but it, it denied the third base for just about forever and now beyond he's got his fifth base he's got his sixth base on the way his economy is so incredible that he can get 3-3 for his bio. He can get 2-2 for his air. He can build more Vikings. His economy is just so much better than his opponents at this point. And this feels impossible. To, it, it's a six Viking lead. And these Vikings are about to be better upgraded as well. Gumio just has to sit here. It is really the long and short of it. He just has to sit here. He just has to hope and pray that his opponent's going to let him back into it. We're at the point where... Kind of a Widow Mine Hail... Okay, I was going to say Widow Mine Thor Hail Mary is going to be the play. Two Thors on the way. Transformation Servos are on the way. He's going to try to maybe get some really juicy splash shots. Uh, if Yen gets all tanked up or gets all clustered up, and then, you know, maybe your Viking count can matter. He's setting up for a decent concave here. Thor's now just about... Or th first Thor's done. And well, uh, it's not a fight you want to take. You really need to fight under missile torch with Thors. And so like Thors are getting decent shots. What is that high impact? Is that splash? Okay, no, he does have him on splash mode. There is that as the this fifth base is going to get canceled, killed maybe, was it killed? Yeah, so fifth base is going to get killed. Thors are, you know, doing some level of a splash. They're going to try to break down these tanks right here. That's pretty solid uh, as the Thors it's always interesting seeing the approach here. Sometimes you go high impact because of the bonus range. Uh, but for now, I mean, the splash damage is really important, I think, as, as we talk about this. This is a battle cruiser on the other side getting some damage done. And it seems like Gumiho has been able to force Beyond back. Gumiho is now able to build six Vikings at a time instead of four. There is that. Battle cruiser teleports other side. Uh, battle cruiser on this side. Looks like it Yamato'd something. And Gumiho, north side base on the way. This base. Building a planetary in the gold. So he's building a little bit more of a defensive position. Bio's going to try to get on top of whatever they can find. They kill a tank. It's all dead. I, did they get any Vikings? I don't think so. I don't think they got battle cruisers either. Bjorn, of course, is trading this out for more Vikings, more battle cruisers. Sure. But the big deal is Gumiho didn't lose his Vikings. He's on 29 Vikings versus the 26. Three battle cruisers to three. Equal air upgrades. Bjorn's going to have his... 3-3 soon enough, but for now, equal air upgrades. And now Gumiho feels like he can get a little bit aggressive. He's got tanks on the ground. He's going to take a really nice fight here. Knocks down a bunch of the battle cruisers very quickly. And the Thors aren't here, though. And the Thors would make a big difference in this air fight. No, actually, Thors are. Flash damage going to start to go off pretty nicely. Thor actually targeting the ground, which is not what you want. Getting splash damage done on the Vikings. This is what matters, by the way. 20 Vikings to 15. Gumio with the lead. He kills the base on the bottom side. Should be able to get this bottom side base as well if he decides to go for it. And Gumio, really nice fight. Takes down the battle cruisers very quickly. The tanks were everything. I mean, the bio wasn't ever going to be able to do much of anything. And now Gumio's got this bottom side base. He pulled SCVs with this as well. So he's got this really cool sieged up position. And beyond, where's the where's the counterattack? Is there a counter? I don't think there's a counterattack. All of a sudden, Gumiho, despite really 
being having a rough first 18 minutes of this game. He takes down two bases and beyond. So beyond's at four, five, taking the sixth. Gumio's on five, six, what was the four, five, six? Like all of a sudden the economy's bang on equal. I mean, beyond's got a lot more right now. He just dropped a mule hammer, 4,000 minerals a minute versus three. And Beyond does have a bigger bank at least for the time being. So he's building more command centers, doing all that. But like this game has been pretty equalized all of a sudden. Beyond's lost more, sure. But that's how bio versus mech works. In part, you are building this up so you can go in. You're building your economy up so you can kind of trade worse. These battle cruisers have to be very, very careful. Vikings are going to find them. Teleporting back home immediately. Okay, yeah. It, now, no time for Yamato. <laughs> so, you're going to teleport back home. This one should be repaired. Yeah, STVs are going to get deputized off. So, that's going to happen. But now, the Vikings are going to find an orbital. And that's dead. Yon actually, first time in a while, he's down a base. I on the right side is going to get scanned out as well. So, what do we have here? It's one tank. It's a planetary. Are we building armor? Uh, we don't. Actually, I... No, there, there are eBays, certainly, because there are missile turrets on the map. But... I, I'm, I guess I'm a little surprised to not see building armor. I, I guess at this point, Gumio's economy has been so bad for so long that he couldn't really afford it. And in fairness, Gumio hasn't really been maxed out up until right now. He, he's been kind of poking around with it. But if you look at his army value, right, he's worth 2,000, well, 15,000, 1,200 more gas, a little bit more minerals. This army from Gumio is really powerful. It's on four Thors. He's got Ravens. He has Interference Matrix. That's been upgraded. But look at this. So attack on the right side shuts that tank down. And, well, Vikings are trying to sit on the high ground here. Anti-armor missile and the shutdowns on these battle cruisers as well are just... This is a, not a fight that Gun wants to play at all here. That is a disaster of a fight for Bjorn. Yeah, he backs back and gets the Raven down, but the battle cruisers are dying once again. Seven Vikings on the way. Sure, fine. But these tanks are going to go down. The Thors are still here. Bjorn cannot afford to fight in Thor range. Not. Now he's got an upgrade lead, but this was an anti-timing. Bjorn, I think he might have been equal upgrades, maybe. But certainly, he didn't have that armor upgrade on top of things. So the Vikings now are up an upgrade. But I worry that there's just not enough here. Bjorn doesn't really have much of a bank. The Viking lead's still there. There are tanks here. There are Thors here. Gumiho has been behind the, the eight ball. He's been on the ropes, back against it. The last 19 of the last 21 minutes of this game. He builds the composition that he needs. He wins the game. And Gumiho takes down Byun 2-1. He's in the finals here of EPT Korea 222.